This is your AP History Exam, and this is the magnificent sledgehammer of your brain. I feel like that wasn't dramatic enough, like maybe there needs to be an explosion or something. This is your AP History Exam, and this is your magnificent brain. Oh, yeah! Well, I'm Steve Heimler, and you are a stressed out student in one of the AP History courses, either AP Push or AP Euro or AP World, it doesn't matter. In this video, I've got three massively important tips to help you prepare for your AP exams in May. And trust me, if you listen to what I say, then you will go from panicked to absolutely prepared. And by the end of the video, I I'm gonna let you in on a little secret, like, oh. I shouldn't even be doing this. There are certain topics that you don't even have to study because they will not show up on your exam. That's crazy. We'll get there. So tip number one, make sure you know the date and time of your exam. And if you don't know, then here they are. Now the AP overlords recommend that you show up to your testing location at least 30 minutes before the exam. And I think that's pretty good advice. You're already gonna be stressed enough. You don't want the additional stress of getting dumped into that pressure cooker late. Tip number two, get familiar with the format of the exam. And seriously, like don't sleep on this. The entire exam is gonna take you three hours and 15 minutes and it will consist of these four sections. First, multiple choice. You'll have 55 questions that you have to complete in 55 minutes. And since history teacher's math is correct, that is one minute per question. This section will count for 40% of your overall score. Now to be clear, these are not your grandpappy's information-based multiple choice questions. No, they're unwieldy beasts designed to test your ability, not simply to recall vocabulary, but to think historically. So that means that every question will be attached to a stimulus. And that means you might have an excerpt from a document to read or a picture to interpret or a graph or something like that. And then there are gonna be three to four questions based on that stimulus. Now, what does it mean that they're going to test your ability to think historically? Well, it means that you're gonna see questions that ask you about the causes of the event in the stimulus, or maybe it's effects or maybe how the argument in the document might serve as evidence for something else. Okay, then the second section is the short answer questions or the SAQ. For this section, you'll have 40 minutes and accounts for 20% of your score. Now, when you open this section, you'll see that there will be four questions, but you only have to answer three. The first question will have a stimulus and it is required. The second question will also have a stimulus and it is also required. And then the third and fourth questions do not have stimuli and you'll get to choose which one you answer. These are not essays, they are short answer questions. So that means each letter only requires a couple of sentences and that's it. So, you know, don't get crazy. And at that point, you get a 10 minute break. So go to the bathroom, eat a little snack, cry in the corner, bite your pillow, you know, like whatever you need to do. And then you come back to the third section, which is the document-based question or the DBQ. For this, you get 60 minutes to write an entire essay based on seven documents that they give you and it's worth 25% of your score. Now the recommended reading period for the documents is 15 minutes and I think that's kind of a good recommendation. So spend about 15 minutes reading through the documents, annotating them and then planning your essay and then take the last 45 minutes for writing. And then the fourth and final section is the long essay question or the LEQ. For this, you get 40 minutes and it's worth 15% of your score. They're gonna give you three prompts to choose from and you choose the one that you know best and then you start writing. Now, there's no documents here. You just have to crack open those brain folds and pull all the information out and then start writing. And now number three, the most important tip to get you ready for that exam, study only what is going to be on that exam. So here's where I tell you that you don't need to know everything about US history or world history or European history in order to pass this exam or even get a four or five. There are only certain things you need to know. But how do you know what things to remember and what things to forget? Forget. You know I got you. And look, as much as I'd like to tell you that I executed a CIA level heist into the College Board headquarters and secretly gathered all the exam questions so I could tell you exactly what they're going to ask you on the test, well, <laughs> I didn't, you know, I mean, it's illegal and you know, I'm, I'm an upstanding citizen. But there is a secret hiding in plain sight that will tell you exactly what will be on that exam and what will not. These are the course and exam descriptions for each course. And if it's not in here, you can't be tested on it. And if it is in here, then you're gonna see it. But come on, you're not gonna download this 300 page PDF and cancel all your plans for the next month so you can read through the sometimes notoriously vague and confusing language on all of these pages. But don't worry, I did it for you. And how is that? Well, a couple of ways. First, you can download my free 30 day exam review, which will take you through all all my YouTube videos for your course. If you know how I make my videos, I open to the topic page and use these required concepts to write my script. So my videos include everything you need to know for your exam. But if you wanna study all of that way faster, you can grab my Heimler review guides for each of these subjects. They've got whole unit reviews for all the units and you know, like only a few of those are here on YouTube. They've got note guides to help you follow along, practice questions and practice exams. Don't waste your time with a boring review book. Let me help you in a way that's faster and you know, man, maybe a little bit more entertaining. And you know, you'll find that link down in the description. Okay, the second way you need to study is to practice the skills of the course. Now knowing your content is gonna get you a long way, but not all the way. Every question on this exam is going to be testing your ability to think historically. So you're gonna need to know how to interpret documents, how to build arguments with evidence, how to assess change over time, et cetera, et cetera. And if you get the resources I mentioned earlier, those are gonna cover all those skills. And then the third part of your study should include taking practice exams. Now don't let the first time you see the full exam be on exam day. You need to practice if only for the endurance required to 
to sit and take an exam for three hours and 15 minutes. Now, I would suggest at least taking one exam, and if you can, two. If you don't know where to find practice exams, then your teacher should have access to them, or you know, I've got them in my review guide. And if you give yourself to everything that I just said, then you will walk into that exam and crush it in your mind fight. So here's my playlist covering all the skills for the course. And here's the link to get the 30 day guides in my Heimler review guide. So subscribe and stick around for the next few weeks because I'm gonna be posting a metric buttload of videos to help you get ready for those exams. And I'll catch you on the flip flop. Heimler out.